Most of us know about the Industrial Revolution and how that era brought about an explosion of innovation that actually continues to this day. For all intents and purposes, we live in the world that revolution created. However, very few of us speak about the agricultural revolution that preceded this era, even though it was just as important, if not more. How come? At the middle of the 18th century, a wave of modernization in the agricultural sector created a spectacular increase in food production. This allowed societies to sustain larger communities, communities that then gradually left the fields to work in the new factories that were now popping up. So, let's explore a bit this side of our history and find out how modern agriculture was born. Hello! And welcome to 7 Facts. By the 1750s, the world's population was already growing at a quick pace, so the pressure on food production was slowly increasing. However, many scholars believed that this increase would eventually come to a halt. There was simply not enough food for everyone. What these scholars couldn't predict was the impact technological progress would have on agriculture. For instance, in 1701, Jethro Tull, a British agricultural pioneer, invented a horse-drawn seed drill that economically sowed the seeds in neat rows. This meant a better usage of the same land, which led to better yields. Then came the Norfolk four-course crop rotation, a practice of growing a series of four crops throughout the seasons, which meant these crops could be grown on the same fields without any off-season to allow lands to restore. There were also a series of enclosure laws, which gave exclusive ownership rather than common rights to land. This enabled owners to experiment and adopt different methods without the consent of anyone. While this was going on in Britain, because yes, this too began here, other pioneers, both in Europe and America, started to come up with their own ideas. By the 1850s, mechanical harvesters and steam plows have made it on the scene, and such innovations were here to stay. Now, it has to be said, technological progress in agriculture did occur prior to this era. Food production has come a long way since ancient times. Nevertheless, it was still really hard work that required large numbers of workers who did most of the job by hand. But with the arrival of the Renaissance and the modern era, a new wave of ideas came. Some of those ideas weren't always well received. For instance, the enclosure process in England took public lands and gave them into the hands of private owners. Often, this was met with force, resistance and even bloodshed. At the same time, the now landless peasants constituted the basis of the workforce that was soon to be needed in factories. And believe it or not, the Enclosure Acts of England, and later the rest of Europe, were among the chief events Karl Marx used against capitalism in his works. So yes, it's true. This process was neither kind or beneficial for common peasants, but at the same time it did encourage landowners to experiment, buy new seeds and new equipment, all of which led to incomparably larger yields. Prior to the British Agricultural Revolution, it was thought that all demographic growths would eventually stop due to a lack of food. And, truth be told, this was the case every time populations grew in the past. However, after the 1750s, all of this changed. The world population didn't stop growing and it hasn't stopped ever since. One of the most important figures of this revolution was Robert Bakewell. This guy was the first to implement systematic selective breeding of livestock. Sheep, cattle and horses were now bred with specific traits to meet the specific needs of the market. Seeds were now also selectively planted with the same idea in mind. Higher yields for specific markets, which led to higher profits. Then, in the mid-19th century, John Bennett Laws realized something that would prove to change the world forever. Plants need nitrogen and phosphate in their soil. Together with Joseph Henry Gilbert, these two initiated the beginning of chemical fertilizers. 
No more would farmers rely on animals to produce these fertilizers. We could now make our own. This was one giant leap. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you something. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. Ok, now we can move on to the next fact. The agricultural revolution was now well on its way. It initiated, sustained and boosted the industrial revolution. And as Europeans were now sailing literally across the entire world, they also spread their radical new techniques. Other nations now adopted and adapted new farming technologies and by now agriculture wasn't a subsistence thing, it was a profitable business. The inhospitable prairies of the Americas were gradually turned into cattle ranches with cowboys tending to the herds. Once John Deere invented the self-scouring steel plow, the hard-to-farm Midwestern lands of the United States opened up to thousands of peasants. In turn, peanuts, potatoes and corn from the Americas were spread across the entire world and with the help of machinery and new techniques, farmers were able to plant them on all continents with really high yields. This spurred their own agricultural revolutions in China, Africa, the Far East and Australia. Humanity was now feeding itself like never before. But as important as these advancements were, they would have meant nothing if all the extra food would have just spoiled away. Since prehistoric times, man learned to dry and salt meat in order to preserve it, but this was no longer enough. Both meats and plants had to be preserved for a long enough time to ship it wherever. And where there's a demand, there'll always be an offer. In 1795, Nicolas Appert, a French confectioner, invented a way to hermetically seal jars after sterilization, aka boiling. He simply placed the food in glass jars, sealed them with a cork and sealing wax and placed them in boiling water. For this reason, Nicolas is considered to be the father of canning. Fifteen years later, Peter Durant from England took this idea further and replaced the glass jars with tin cans. Tin cans don't seem to be a big deal, but they are. Unlike glass jars, tin cans are more durable and can be easily shipped. Now, local farmers who had to limit their markets to their surrounding towns or at best local provinces could now sell their products literally anywhere in the world. This of course meant much higher profits, profits with which they could now acquire seeds, machines and livestock specific to their own needs. It was the beginning of a true, constant global economy. Now for the first time in our entire history, humanity could grow without any fear of terrific famines. The higher yields and global markets pushed food prices down and, again for the first time in history, common folks didn't spend nearly all of their money on food. From now on, there was no technical reason for famines to occur. But of course, they did occur and still do, but that has very little to do with actual farming and more to do with politics and economy. But that's a subject for another time. Just like the Industrial Revolution, the Agricultural Revolution is still pretty much ongoing. Innovation didn't just stop. Since the first refrigeration system was invented in 1850 by Ferdinand Carré, we've come a long way. In the 1920s, Clarence Birdseye invented quick freezing. The fast freezing of foods produces smaller ice crystals, thus preserving them much better. Thanks to him, the frozen food industry was born, a new way to preserve food and keep it more or less fresh. Well, fresher than canned goods. But the 20th century also saw an incredible, unprecedented rise in urban populations. All these city dwellers need fresh products too, not just preserved ones. So now the challenge was to bring a lot of fresh food to the cities and keep them fresh for as long as possible. And so, chemical additives and preservatives were born. 
This, along with GMOs, are not without their controversies, as too little time has passed to effectively measure their effects on us and nature. However, let there be no doubt in your minds, without these chemical additives, the current urban population of the world could not be sustained. And of course, there's more controversy. Now, more than ever, we make so much food that it's really hard to comprehend the actual figures. But most crops go to feeding our livestock or to make industrial goods, not to feed actual people. As a result, we literally live in what is by far the most prosperous and most abundant period in our 200,000 years long history. And yet, nearly 1 billion people in the world still don't have enough food to eat. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.